Hello, my lovely students. How are you all? A very hearty welcome to this mind-blowing platform, Physics Wala. My name is Super Sharma, and today we are going to do Madam Rides the Bus. It's a very beautiful chapter. It's a beautiful chapter about a young girl, and we are going to read in this chapter a lot of things. You know, we are going to study the nature of an eight-year-old girl. You know how children are. you know children are very inquisitive in nature they are very curious you know and if they are determined to do something they are definitely going to do that and similarly in this chapter also we are going to meet such a girl now if we look at the title madam rides the bus see when we read madam we suppose that okay we are going to talk about an elder lady an elderly lady is basically called madam so we cannot actually guess by reading the title that it is about a young girl it's about an 8 year old girl now the madam she is called madam why is she called madam that we are going to read in the chapter and how she rides a bus does she ride it with her family or does she ride it alone so this thing we are going to study in this chapter and you are going to love this chapter in this chapter something unique is going to happen what is going to happen basically that we are going to see that children have a fantasy you know world around them they are living in a fantasy world they are you know quite good at imagining the things and they are you know uh, very much curious to know that how nature works and for that they are going to you know go to any limit but in the end they see the reality of life in this chapter we are going to see that this girl also she sees the reality of life she faces the reality of life that what really happens actually so it's a very long chapter it has basically you know four parts so it's a long chapter though but you are going to enjoy every bit of it so now let's start first we'll have an overview then line by line explanation word meanings important key points plus i am going to give you an homework as well okay i'm going to give you a homework chaliye let's start now the chapter madam madam rides the bus is a sensitive story it's also called a sensitive story as i told you it's a beautiful story but it's also sensitive because here we are going to talk about the emotions here we are going to discuss the emotions of a girl of a young girl and how she actually does you know she actually finally achieves what she wanted to do for a very long period and how did how she does that and after that how she faces the reality the dark truth of life so it's about an 8 year old she is an 8 year old girl whose name is valia mai her name is valia mai through valli she is called valli in this chapter valli in madam rides a bus valli kanan now the name of the writer is also valli kanan and valli kanan is his pseudo name now you may search the real name of the person this may be your homework okay so you have to search about this writer that what is his real name but his pseudo name his pen name is valli kanan valli kanan depicts the curious nature the curious the inquisitive nature okay children want to learn everything you know they are always asking questions if you look at children if you look at young children right from the age of 2 and 3 when they learn to speak they are so much you know curious they want to know each and everything how this works and uh, how is this happening who are you what are you going to do you know children have a lot of questions in their mind and similarly this 8 year old uh, old girl also has a lot of questions in her mind the story also shows that how easily children are fascinated by new things and their curiosity doesn't end without them experiencing the delights of fantasy life in their life it means that you know if you know children make up their mind for example a children you know they want to eat a particular thing they are you know thinking that i want to eat this particular thing they are going to do that okay they are very stubborn unless and until they do not eat that thing unless and until they do not gain that experience of uh, in case they want to gain an experience if they want to go to a particular place they are going to do that okay they you know force their children or i uh, you know, they force their parents or either they you know a uh, devise a plan to do something here also we are going to see that how an 8 year old girl devises a plan to live her fantasy fantasy life whatever she is fantasizing about whatever 
you know think that is you know attracting her now she finally achieves it and how she does that this is a beautiful chapter about this the uh, same thing now let's start the chapter there was a girl named walia mai who was called wali for short now as i told you she was called wali so we are going to call her wali she was 8 years old and she was very curious about things she was very inquisitive about the things as the children generally are her favorite pastime was standing in the front doorway of her house watching what was happening in the street outside now generally children have their pastimes all the children different different children have different habits different hobbies and routines so what this girl likes she likes to stand in her doorway she has a doorway you know she has a balcony sort of thing in her house and standing there she you know watches each and everything that is going on around her house she want she sees that whatever is happening on the street outside there were no playmates of uh, of her own age on the street and this was about all she had to do now fortunately fortunately or unfortunately you know you can say that uh, she did not have any friend of her own age you know generally in neighborhood we have a lot of friends we have you know children of our own age and we generally play with them but with walli there was no one to play she was all alone so this was her favorite pastime she used to you know stand at the doorway of her house and she used to look at the street she used to look whatever was happening on the street but for walli standing at the front door was every bit as enjoyable as any of the elaborate games other children played now also they are emphasizing on this thing that if in case she had friends she was not interested in them she wouldn't have you know played with them because she thought that this experience that i'm gaining by watching in the street by you know uh, taking experiences by looking on the street it is more it is better then the elaborate games are the children play you know children play elaborate games they play different kind of games they are very elaborative in nature they are you know um, there are particular games that children play but she didn't enjoy any, any of that she used to enjoy that watching the street gave her many new unusual experiences see she used to gain unusual experiences the in experiences were quite you know strange for her the different for her you know the most fascinating thing of all was the bus that traveled between her village and the nearest town now as we observe as i told you that children have different different uh, pastimes so she used to look at the street and she used to look at a bus you know there was a bus at in her town and uh, in her village and that bus used to go from village to the town and then from town to village and she used to notice that bus coming now if you remember when you were very young i guess you also notice a lot of things i mean i was very lucky that we didn't have mobile phones at that time and uh, we did not have other pastimes to do we didn't have you know video games and everything children did have video games but that they were not so interesting that you know left each and everything for them but i remember that we also used to observe everything you know uh, children were very observant at that time and this story is very old so that girl was also very observant and she used to love watching that you know bus going up and down it passed through her street each hour once going to the town and once coming back as i told you it used to you know come once you know it used to come and then it used to go after every hour she it's going to the town then it's coming back the sight of the bus filled each time with a new set of passengers was a source of unending joy for walli now obviously as the bus was going it's coming you know up and down there were different passengers each each and every time there were different different passengers and she used to you know notice each and every passenger she used to look at each and every passenger and that was quite fascinating for her she used to love that experience uh, of watching the people day after day she watched the bus and gradually a tiny wish crept into her head and grew there she wanted to ride on that bus even if just once now what happens she has now you know developed a fascination she has now something in her heart she has a longing in her heart she has developed that that you know i want to ride on that bus 
okay she had me i guess she had never ridden on a bus before and it was you know quite you know different experience for her she wanted to gain that experience she wanted to climb on that bus she wanted to ride that bus it was this thing that crept in her heart you know it was growing in her heart this wish became stronger and stronger until it was an overwhelming desire wali would cheer wistfully at the people who got on or off the bus when it stopped at the street corner this wish became stronger and stronger you know wishes and desires unless and until they are not fulfilled they keep on growing and especially with the stubborn people here we'll see that wali is quite a stubborn child she is a stubborn child and the desire is growing and growing it's growing like a full tree it has grown now and now what she wants to do she is you know wistfully this means me wistfully means longingly she is longing for that she desperately wants to ride that bus each and every day that desire is growing and she's you know she's thinking that when i will sit in that bus their faces would kindle in her longings dreams and hopes if one of her friends happened to ride the bus and tried to describe the sights of the town to her wali would be too jealous to listen and sh- would shout in english proud and proud you know their faces would kindle whenever she used to you know imagine people you know climbing up and down the bus she used to you know imagine their faces and the faces used to light up in her imagination you know as you know children usually do when they're imagining something everything is very bright you know so their faces are quite bright in her imagination she is always thinking about those people she is always thinking that you know how the people feel when they ride on the bus and you know when her friends one of her friends they ride the bus and they you know share their experience you know that i have ridden the bus and i was i went on a bus and something like that they you know share their experience what she does she says proud proud how does she respond she says proud proud why because she is jealous she is quite jealous she is quite envious of her friends that how are they able to ride on the bus and i have never ridden on the bus she has a strong desire to ride on the bus so that is why she is quite jealous she is quite envious neither she nor her friends really understood the meaning of the word but they use it often as a slang expression of disapproval now the funny part was that they did not know what proud actually meant proud proud they used to call it you know they used to call the other person they never knew the meaning all her friends and she did they she did not understand the meaning of the word but they used to use it and they used it as a slang expression you know now that there are some words that we use as a slang you know now what's a slang language i'll tell you an ex- uh, example see hello is a proper word hi is a proper word. but hey ah we see hey ah bye ah we see these words we say these words we cannot write these words we do not write hey ya ah. and we hello ah and uh, so these are the slang words so she was also she also used she and her friends they used it as a slang language you know they did not know the meaning of it but we knew that somewhere in her heart she was very jealous she was very envious of her friends who used to ride on the bus and shared the experiences with her over many days and months wali listened carefully to the conversations between her neighbors and people who regularly used the bus and she also asked a few discreet questions now over many days as i told you that she is going to devise a plan so she has to lay a foundation for her plan so what was her first thing to do she started asking questions from the people she used to observe that a lot of people are you know getting up and down on the bus and uh, there are different sort of people her friends and a lot of people and she used to notice them and she used to listen to their conversations very well and she was listening to the conversation that you know what are they conversing about maybe they'll talk about the route maybe they'll they'll discuss the fare of the bus and everything now she you also used to ask a few discreet questions discreet means careful questions she used to ask that okay i you know i have to ask a few questions from them but she was very careful about it she never you know expressed her desire in front of them okay she was quite you know a very uh, different kind of a person she had a personality of her own and she never used to tell that okay i also have a desire and i'm actually planning to ride the bus she never told them but she used to ask careful questions so that she may have uh, she can gather all the information about the bus about the fare and everything now you may think that uh, it's very simple to ride on a bus what's the big thing about riding the bus she can tell her parents 
she can ask her parents that okay uh, take me on a ride to the bus but i'm telling you this story is quite old this is about the older times you know children were not very expressive and even the parents did not listen to their children very carefully they did not used to you know fulfill their kids demand that whatever you know children demanded and they used to fulfill it no nothing like that nothing not of that sort she was she never expressed her desire in front of her parents maybe she knew that they are going to say no to her and that is why she was you know planning everything very discreetly she was not openly planning but she was you know secretly planning each and everything and obviously what she knew the way she picked up various small details about the bus journey the town was 6 miles from her village the fare was 30 paise one way which is almost nothing at all she heard one well dressed man say but to wali who scarcely saw that much money from one month to the next it seemed a fortune the trip to the town took 45 minutes now the town was 6 miles from her house now she has picked up you know little little details first thing that she picked up was that how far was the town the town was 6 miles okay it was 6 miles and she then discovered that how much was the fare the fare was 30 paise and she asked it from a well dressed man okay she may have asked it from a person a well grown man and the man answered that okay it's nothing it's just 30 paise now 30 paise may be 30 rupees or uh, 30 rupees or you know maybe a double of that 60 rupees 100 rupees it's, it may account to 100 rupees and for him 100 rupees are nothing but for uh, valley it's a lot of amount i guess not 100 rupees i'm i would not be correct if i'm saying 100 rupees i'm just correcting it um if we'll talk about maybe the story is if it's 100 years old then it is i guess 30 rupees only but for a child 30 rupees is a big amount okay now uh, we are talking about those times that children did not give you know pocket money to the you know parents did not give <laughs> pocket money to the children so it was nothing for that person but it was a huge amount for valley now who's costly who's costly she never saw that money it was very you know a rare experience for her to see that much money and it seemed like a fortune it seemed like a big amount to her the trip to the town took 45 minutes it took 45 minutes now if i remember that even when we were young you know when we were 50 even i am talking about the time 20 years back if i think that parents just used to give you know one or two rupees to their child so that they can spend the money and in 1 or 2 rupees you could buy a small packet or you could buy popcorn or peanuts and everything and you could just enjoy you know in 1 or 2 rupees you used to get the packets and everything now you know the packets are 5 rupees or 10 rupees <laughs> but at that time it was only of 1 rupee or 2 rupee so it was you know we are talking about even the older times so the parents you know never shared that much money with the children On reaching town, if she stayed in her seat and paid another thirty paise, she could return home on the same bus. Now, obviously, she was quite logical. She thought that okay, if I'm riding on the bus and I'm if I'm going to the town, I also have to come back. She thought that okay, if I keep on sitting on the bus, the bus is obviously it's bound to come back. I will keep on sitting on the bus. I will pay thirty paise to the conductor and I'll come back on the same bus. Okay, that way I would have an up and down ride. Okay, she was basically talking about taking a round trip. Okay, it's a round trip. She wanted to go to the town. Then she was thinking that I would come back from the town. uh sitting on the bus i would never you know climb down of the bus i would just you know uh come back this meant that she could take one o'clock afternoon bus reach the town at 45 and back home by about uh, 245 on and on went her thoughts as she calculated and recalculated planned and replanned now we are talking about an 8 year old girl and that too you know we are talking about the innocent times children were not very clever they did not have google they did not have calculators to calculate each and everything but she kept on you know making plans she kept on devising the plans she was thinking that okay if i leave in 1 o'clock bus you know buses have a particular time the bus used to leave at 1 uh, pm she thought that okay if i sit at uh, sit in the bus at 1 pm uh, the bus would reach the town at 1:45 then from there uh, the town to the village maybe i'll reach by 2:45 she even calculated that obviously the bus is not going to just start it's not going to reach the town and then it's not immediately going to come back she took a grace period of 15 minutes okay she also took a grace period of 15 minutes and she thought she thought in her mind that okay uh, not only 30 minutes but she took a grace time of half an hour 
and she thought that maybe i'll come back to my uh, town at 2:45 on and on went her thoughts she was thinking she was calculating she was you know devising each and everything very carefully because she never wanted to get caught and she wanted it to be a you know a successful plan she wanted it no details to be missed in this particular plan now well one fine spring day the afternoon bus was just on the point of leaving the village and turning into the main highway when a small voice was heard shouting stop the bus stop the bus and a tiny hand was raised raised commandingly now the day came okay the day came one fine spring evening you know uh, sorry afternoon spring evening uh, spring afternoon it was spring afternoon you know what spring spring is when all the flowers grow and uh, it was a beautiful afternoon and the girl the girl now valli was all set to you know uh, get on the bus and when the bus was about to leave the village maybe she was a little late so she just ran after the bus and she said stop the bus stop the bus and it was commandingly she said that all that commandingly she was doing a gesture with her hand stop it stop it okay the bus slowed down to a crawl and the conductor sticking his head out the door said hurry then tell whoever it is to come quickly it's me shouted valli i am the one who has to get on the bus slowed down to a crawl it was you know obviously when you stop the bus the bus you know takes a halt and it starts crawling it means that the bus was moving slowly now it had taken a halt and the conductor shouted whoever wants to get in just get in now obviously the conductor was imagining that obviously this small girl this little girl she is not climbing on the climb on the bus alone maybe she has come to uh, drop someone maybe she has come to drop her grandmother or her grandfather and she uh, is just helping them to get on the bus but he was surprised he was surprised then she said that i want to come okay i want to come it's the one i want to come i want to you know get on the bus i am the one who has to get on the bus i am the one who has to ride on the bus it was obviously very surprising for the conductor as well by now the bus had come to a stop and the conductor said oh really you don't say so yes i simply have to go to town said wally now we are going to get introduced to a very interesting character and that is the conductor see it's a very funny story okay and in this thing a very funny element has been added to the character of the conductor the way she addresses to wally the way he is always poking his nose into wally's matters that is you know quite interesting the way he speaks he is always you know speaking sarcastically with her she he speaks with a lot of sarcasm so he says oh really you want to get on the bus you don't say so you know chalo let's get on the bus and she says yes i simply do i have to go to the town now she also tries to hand out the money she says here's my money now see valli valli is a girl of principles and valli has a lot of confidence okay now a little bit over confidence as well but she wants to you know show her pride she says that here is my money if you do not believe me i am handing you out the money she is thinking in her mind that maybe the conductor might be thinking that okay she is such a small girl from where she got so much money so she says that okay see my money i am you know ready to get on the bus now she shows him the coins okay okay but first you must get on the bus said the conductor and he stretched out a hand to help her never mind she said i can get on by myself you don't have to help me now see valli's character valli is such a character she is a very strong and confident girl when the conductor hands him when the conductor offers him a hand her, her hand to help that okay let me help you she says that oh no i do not need your help to get on the bus i will climb on my own she was such a strong and confident girl she is just like a 21st century girl who has a lot of confidence in herself now the conductor was a jolly sort fond of joking as i told you that the conductor was very very jolly he was very funny he was a fun sort uh, sort of a person who is always you know into making fun and everything full of sarcasm so he says oh please don't be angry with me my fine madam now this is where we see the word madam for the first time we hear the word madam for the first time basically the conductor calls her madam you know whom we call madam we call madam to an elderly person 
person or we call madam to a person whom we want to give a lot of respect you know somewhere in conductor's heart the girl had you know Uh, gained a little bit of respect and she was all behaving like an elderly lady she was behaving like a madam actually so she he calls her madam he says here have a seat right up there in the front he offers her seat everybody move aside please <laughs> make way for madam now he is again joking everybody aside please make way for madam make way for madam madam is coming so basically again he is you know full of sarcasm he is basically trying to say that okay a uh, strong independent girl is coming who has come on her own she has money and everything so just make way for her make way for her your queen he wants maybe he's thinking in his heart now it was a slack time of day and there were only six or seven passengers on the bus they were all looking at wali and laughing with the conductor it was a slack time of day slack time of day it means it was not a peak hour okay so there was a very very less you know uh, people there was very less crowd on the bus and usually in afternoons people you know they take rest and everything they take a nap or uh, everything so people do not climb on the bus that much so it was a slack time so there were very fewer people were there on the bus now the people were also laughing along with the conductor now valni was overcome with shyness avoiding everyone's eyes she walked quickly to an empty seat and sat down she was overcome with shyness obviously it was bound to happen she was just a little girl she was getting shy because of all the attention that she was getting everybody was noticing her you know walking in the walking uh, you know up and down in the bus and she was all alone so everyone's eyes was were on her and she was just simply ignoring everyone she just quickly got on her seat now me we start now madam the conductor was smiling then he blew his whistle twice and the bus moved forward with a roar it was a new bus it's outside painted a gleaming white with some green stripes along the sides now they're basically trying to explain the look of the bus the bus is very important first of all they explain the character of madam they explain the character of valli very well now they are basically trying to explain that how beautiful was the bus what kind of a bus valli was traveling on now uh, he also says may we start now madam he was again calling her madam he was again you know teasing her he was pulling her leg and he said no may we start now madam with your permission with your due permission we want to start with the bus and he just blew up his whistle you know conductors usually have a whistle and they you know it is to basically signal the uh, driver to start the bus now they are explaining that what kind of a bus it was the bus started with a roar with a roar means it uh, the basically the sound of the engine okay they are talking about the sound of engine was like of a roar it was a new bus it was painted a gleaming white okay it was a white color it had some green stripes along the sides it was outside of the bus they are basically talking about the you know Uh, exterior of the bus the interior of the bus it had overhead bars you know there are overhead bars where you can hold on they shone like silver it was they were so bright they were very silvery and directly in front of valli above the windshield you know what's a windshield you could see the windshield in front there was a beautiful clock the seats were soft and luxurious the seats were very comfortable they were very soft soft because it was a uh you know new bus so they were also explaining that there was a beautiful clock you know above the windshield of the bus now some people some children might wonder that why why they are explaining about the beauty of the bus why are they explaining that the bus was new and something like that why because the bus is very important for valli maybe the bus is not so important for us the description of the bus is given to uh, you know to actually explain that what kind of things was valli seeing the writer it is trying to form an imagery because whatever valli was seeing they are trying to show us the writer is trying to show us malli valli might have seen the exterior of the bus now she is you know looking at the interior of the bus that how beautiful it is looking how beautiful is the clock that is you know above the windshield and she is looking at everything that how bright how silvery it is so that is why the description of the bus is very important in for you know from the point of view of valli okay may we start now madam okay it's you know again being repeated this paragraph 
The bus was now going along the bank of a canal. The road was very narrow. On one side, there was a canal and beyond it, palm trees, grassland, distant mountains and the blue, blue sky. Again, as I told you, that this chapter is full of visual imageries. Okay, there are a lot of visual imageries in this chapter. Okay, I, al I will also write it in the overview. Okay, this chapter is full of visual imageries. Now, what are visual imageries? I have already explained it to you while I was, you know, talking about the poems and everything. In the poems, basically, we read about the visual imageries. Visual imageries are when the poet, when the uh, writer, basically, they try to explain each and everything so beautifully, uh, so nicely, so elaboratively, that you kind of form an image in your mind. Now, basically, we are talking about Wali, who wants to gain experience, who wants to, you know, live her fantasy life. And that was to ride on the bus. She wanted to see each and everything, you know, view and the beautiful views outside the bus. So that is why we are also seeing the views along with her. That is why everything is, you know, explained very elaboratively. So they was telling that the bus was now going along a canal. Canal, here canal means a river. It was going along a river. The road was very narrow. Okay, it was very narrow. It was not a wide one. It was very narrow. And there was canal and beyond it, there were palm trees, there were grasslands, there were distant mountains, there was blue, blue sky. So each and everything was looking very beautiful. On the other side was a deep ditch and then acres and acres of green fields. There was a deep ditch, okay? It was kind of a valley sort of thing. You could see a deep ditch and then acres and acres of green, green fields. They're talking about a village and from the village it is going to the town. And so obviously there are mountains as well. There are fields, there are rivers, each and everything. So green 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 as far as the eye could see oh it was also wonderful it was also wonderful it was also wonderful now they are telling the you know uh, the thinking the whatever you know she is processing in her mind she is trying to process the beauty of, of it and she's saying oh it's so wonderful Bali is you know thinking in her mind that oh this is so beautiful this is so mesmerizing suddenly she was startled by a voice listen child said the voice you shouldn't stand like that sit down now suddenly Bali heard a noise she was startled she was she was startled means she was shocked she was actually surprised by a voice. Somebody was telling her to sit down. Okay, there was a man who was telling her to sit down. Sitting down, she looked, okay. Sitting down, she looked to see who had spoken. It was an elderly man who had honestly been concerned for her, but she was annoyed by his attention. Now, this girl, when she was sitting down, okay, she sat down, but she saw that who is actually telling me, who is telling me to do this thing? So she looked at the man and who was actually concerned for her. Obviously, the man was quite concerned that maybe the girl is going to fall and you should not basically stand in the moving bus. So there is nobody here who is a child. She said, hot, haughtily, I have paid my 30 paise like everyone else. The conductor chimed in, oh, sir, but this is a very grown up madam. Do you think a mere girl could pay her own fare and travel to the city all alone? Now, she also says that, as I told you, that she is a strong and confident and independent girl. She says, who is a child? I'm not a child. I have paid 30 paise. I have, uh, you know, paid the fare. Now, again, the conductor chimed in. Chimed in means poke his nose. You don't know what is poking nose, poking nose in others, other people's matters. Now he jumped into that conversation, conductor jumped into the conversation and he says, Oh, sir, what are you talking about? She's a grown up madam, she's not a child. Do you really think just a mere girl, it means just a girl could can pay a fare? She's a grown up lady, that is why she was able to pay the fare and she is not a baby, she is not a child, she is a grown up lady. So we see the conductor is basically trying to, you know, make the fun of situation, one of the situation. Valni shot an angry glance at the conductor and said, I am not a madam, please remember that and you have not yet given me my ticket. I remember the conductor said mimicking her tone, everyone laughed and gradually Wali too joined in the laughter. Wali shot an angry glance. Wali looked at the conductor with, you know, an angry expression. 
and he said to the conductor she said to the conductor that hey i'm not a madam why are you calling me madam she was annoyed at the conductor as well that why is he calling her a madam and he also she also says that okay where is my ticket you haven't given me my ticket now what conductor does is that the conductor starts mimicking her okay the way she is speaking the way valli is speaking so haughtily so so proudly she is you know saying uh, everything with a little bit of pride in her and he starts mimicking her he starts basically copying her and then everybody starts to laugh and valli also joined them valli also started laughing the conductor punched the ticket and handed it to her just sit back and make yourself comfortable why should you stand when you have paid for a seat because i want to she answers standing back again now valli she is stubborn now the conductor asks her that madam you should sit on your seat okay valli you just sit on your seat why are you standing up okay uh, you have paid for your ticket you have paid for a seat why are you not sitting on the seat because obviously the conductor is also concerned for the girl for the little girl she is traveling alone and maybe she can fall from the bus and she is just traveling standing it's not safe for a little child to you know uh, keep standing on a moving bus but she says no I want to stand because I want to that is why I'm standing but if you stand on the seat you may fall and hurt yourself when the bus makes a sharp turn or hits a bump that's why we want you to sit down child now the conductor he is basically trying to pacify valli he is basically trying to you know give reasons to valli that why it is important for her to sit down because he tells her that you know maybe when we'll take a sharp turn we are whenever we'll hit on a bump okay when the bus is going to jump we are you know basically we'll you know uh, climb on a speed breaker or something you might fall and you might hurt yourself that is why please sit down he is you know trying to reason with her and it's difficult to reason with a stubborn child so he has to give her a lot of reasons she was not an obedient child okay she was just not like an innocent obedient child that whatever you tell her to do she will do it no she was not that sort of girl i'm not a child i'll tell you she said irritably i'm 8 years old of course of course how stupid of me 8 years my the bus stopped some new passengers got on and the conductor got busy for a time afraid of losing her seat valli finally sat down again valli responds by saying i'm not a child i'm not a child she is not liking that that people are calling her a child she doesn't like that people call her a child she's telling that i'm 8 years old okay i'm not i'm a grown up now see if you see children if you basically say think uh, you know talk about children that even when the child of uh, child is of 3 years they do not want to believe that we are children you know whenever they'll look at a small baby whenever they are you going to see a younger baby you know younger than them they are going to call it a baby oh such a cute baby he's a child i am not a child okay i'm a grown up children always want to grow up fast okay and when once they grow up they want to you know you know uh, get back to their childhood again even if you you know think about it you know we are always thinking that we should become children again our childhood should return and we do not like being grown up but when we are children we want to grow up similar is the case with valli she doesn't like that everybody is calling her a child she says she is focusing on this thing that i'm an 8 year old girl uh so the conductor again he says of course of course of course of course madam how silly of me how stupid of me oh ho i'm calling you uh you know a child now the bus stopped and a lot of passengers they climbed on and now valli is actually now very scared that you know uh, people might take her seat so she takes her seat back so that you know nobody she doesn't have to give her seat to anybody else an elderly woman came and sat beside her are you all alone dear she asked valli as the bus started again now valli is going to meet a very strange character as i told you that valli's ride valli's ride in the bus is going to be adventurous she is going to meet a lot of uh, strange people on the bus now she meets an elderly lady okay and she is you know she'll grow even more irritating she is going to irritate her and it, she is also a very interesting sort of character what really happens is that 
uh, she asked her that are you alone are you traveling alone as elderly women are basically concerned so valli found the women absolutely repulsive such big holes she had in her ear lobes and such ugly earrings in them and she could smell the betel nut the women was chewing and the see the betel juice that was threatening to spill over her lips at any moment ugh who would be so be a uh, sociable with such a person here in this paragraph here in this paragraph you are going to see different and different different imageries you are going to experience visual imagery olfactory imagery okay and also you know the imagery of no not uh, auditory image uh, imagery we are not going to get but yes we are going to see a visual imagery and we are going to see a uh, you know a uh, a uh, olfactory imagery so they are trying to explain the women as well that the women was quite ugly not ugly basically she was very old and she was very repulsive she was not appealing she was not at all attractive she had big ear lobes first of all they explain her ears that it had big ear ear lobes ear lobes means this thing okay the ear lobes was, were very big big and they had ugly earrings her earrings were not very beautiful and you could actually smell betel she was you know chewing betel she was chewing pan she was chewing that and the women uh, was not act actually looking attractive at all and uh, that is why valli was you know she was very repulsive she did not like the lady and it was you know spilling out the juice was also spilling out of her mouth she thought that maybe if i'll speak to her maybe you know she'll spit out okay the drops of betel juice maybe they'll get on to my face so valli was very concerned she did not want to you know interact with that woman at all ug I do not want to be sociable with that person. I do not want to talk with that lady. So she did not like that lady at all. Okay. Yes, I'm traveling alone. She answered curtly, and I have got a ticket too. Yes, she is on her way to town. Said the conductor with a thirty paise ticket. Yes, I'm traveling alone again. She tells. Okay, she tells her. Yes, I'm traveling alone. She doesn't want to talk, but she. still response she says yes i'm traveling alone she said curtly curtly means showing displeasure she is not at all you know sometimes we speak with pleasure we are very happy to meet the person but she is do oh yeah i'm alone and i have got a ticket too now she again emphasizes yes i have ticket you know i have a ticket too yes she is on her way to town again <laughs> again we can see that the conductor is interrupting Con conductor again jumps into the conversation and he says yes yes she is traveling alone and she has paid 30 paise for the ticket she has paid full amount of a ticket oh why don't you mind your own business said wali but she laughed all the same and the conductor laughed too she said why don't you mind your business okay keep your uh, you know uh, thoughts with yourself do not uh, say anything to me she is basically you know getting angry on the old lady and but what happens was that the old lady started laughing and the conductor started laughing as well because obviously everybody is thinking that she is such a small girl she is such a mere girl of 8 years old and she is so outspoken basically the character of valli is quite outspoken okay she doesn't you know she has no uh, you know she doesn't get shy okay she is not like other children who are basically shy in front of people she speaks her heart out okay she speaks whatever is going on in her heart she is going to spill it out now but the old women went on with her drivel is it proper for such a young person to travel alone do you know exactly where you're going on in the town what's the street what's the house number now the old women went on with her drivel drivel means silly nonsense now the old lady is asking her different sort of questions that it is not appropriate for you to you know uh, ride alone it's not safe for you do you actually know that where you are going in the town do you know the street number do you know the house where you're going because obviously the lady is thinking the old lady might be thinking that she'll you know uh, get down the bus and she has to go to the town she has to meet someone there she has to go to somebody's house and she is basically concerned that how such a little girl is going to do all that she was okay she was okay on her part obviously it's very uh, you know sensible it's you know logical for her to get concerned for such a little girl but she was thinking that it's all a drivel valli was thinking that all this all is a uh, drivel this all is nonsense why is this lady irritating me you need not bother about me i can take care of myself valli said turning her face towards the window and staring out obviously in her you know swag valli said oh you do not need to worry about me 
I'll just take care of myself. Okay, you do not need to worry about me, old lady. She is just thinking in her head that why is she not stopping? Okay, why is she is you know going on with her nonsense? She is getting very much irritated. We can see that Wally is now quite irritated with that lady. Her first journey, what careful, painstaking, elaborate plan she had to make for it. Now, we'll actually find out that how how Wally actually planned for it. How she got the money. We were seeing. as we saw in the you know first or second page we saw that walli thought that this money is quite a fortune it's you know 30 paise is a big amount for a girl and 30 plus 30 she had to actually uh, gather 60 rupees or uh, 60 paise okay and it was a huge amount how she did that we'll come to know her first journey what careful painstaking it was very careful she had devised a very careful plan it was painstaking okay it, uh, took a lot of effort on her side elaborate plan she had to make for it she had thriftily saved whatever stray coins thriftily means means you know spent more carefully okay she was carefully spending the money she was very careful about the money that she was getting obviously she got money from her parents a uh, little bit of money as parents usually give to her whatever stray coins stray coins came her way resisting every temptation to buy peppermints toys balloons and the like and finally she had saved a total of 60 paise what she did basically what you are going to read in this chapter is that to get something you need to lose something okay in order to get something you need to lose something and for getting on that bus she had did a lot of things she had actually resisted herself of all the temptations she did not buy any toys she did not buy any peppermint she did not buy any balloons and the like she resisted all the temptations she did a lot just in order to get on that bus okay and finally by resisting all her temptations by you know stopping herself by spending the money thriftily she was able to you know miser she became a miser for a bit of time so that she could you know gather 60 paise and she had saved 60 paise how difficult it had been particularly that day at the village fair but she had resolutely stifled a strong desire to ride the merry go round even though she had the money now we could see that it was so difficult especially she also went to a fair fair means a mela she went to a mela she went to a fair and you know children love the fair children want to go on the merry go round she had money to go on the merry go round but she saved the money so she was such a mature girl you could see you know you could just learn from the story that wally was such a, an excellent girl she was such a, a mature girl you know she was able to you know stop herself you know she was able to control her desires she was such a stubborn she was such a little stubborn girl she was determined she was resolutely stifled it means that she controlled herself she you know just kept a stone on her heart she was quite you know uh, uh, stubborn about it that yes i'm going to do it you know yes i'm going to spend the money i want to go on that merry go round i have the money but i i have to spend the money i have to save the money in order to fulfill my other desire and that is to ride on the bus after she had enough money saved her next problem was how to slip out of the house without her mother's knowledge but she manages without too much difficulty now the bigger part goes down the bigger part was to gather the money she said that it was not difficult to get out of the house because her mother maybe she was not very careful or something she said that she had enough money saved the only problem was how to slip out of the house and she saw that she will do that without any difficulty because every day after lunch her mother would sleep for to take a nap for 1 to 4 hours or so she her mother used to sleep for 1 to 4 hours she could sleep for very long in the afternoon nap women usually usually take an uh, take an afternoon nap and i guess that at those times they didn't have tv serials and everything so that is why her mother was maybe free she did not have time you know she did not have tv serials to watch she did not have any story to catch up uh saas bahu serial to catch up so she was quite free so she used to sleep and it was quite a good opportunity for wali to slip out of the house simply and she could just go out and ride on the bus wali always uses hours for her excursions as she stood looking from the doorway of her house or sometimes even ventured out in the village today the same hours could be used for her first excursion outside the village wali always used these hours whenever her mother used to sleep it was quite a good opportunity for her 
okay her mother was not looking after her she was just you know this time was her own that was her private time that was the space she used to get and she used to spend it on excursions her excursions were what she used to you know whatever she used to do you know she used to um, as we learned in the starting that she used to love standing on the doorway she used to watch on the street maybe her mother stopped her from doing so so she utilized the time she you know thought of the time that okay when my mother would be sleeping i would be doing this thing and she also sometimes she used to venture out in the village sometimes she used to go out in the village and as children usually do okay she used to wander in whole village and she used to you know uh, do her excursions but today she used the same time when she had gathered the money to ride on the bus she knew that her mother would be sleeping the bus rolled on now cutting across a bare landscape now rushing through a tiny hamlet or past an odd way side shop now they are explaining again that what was the exterior of the bus that where the bus was traveling the bus was rolled on now cutting across a bare landscape there was a bare lands landscape okay there was no vegetation okay there was no vegetation now rushing through a tiny hamlet they were rushing through a tiny hamlet hamlet means a small town okay a small town or a small village basically you can say or past an odd wayside shop there was an odd wayside shop that they were crossing sometimes the bus seemed to on the point of gobbling up now as she was riding on the bus for the first time so what was her visuals what she was saying seeing she was seeing that maybe as she was sitting on the bus she just thought that maybe the bus is going to gobble up another vehicle because it was moving with such a speed that it is going to gobble up it is basically going to you know a uh, swallow another vehicle okay it is going to get on another vehicle they are going to collide with each other that was coming towards them or a pedestrian crossing the crossing the road so valli was quite scared at these moments that okay the vehicles may collide the vehicle that vehicle may you know <laughs> climb on that other vehicle or on that passenger it may you know get on that passenger but lo but oh here lo means oh an exclamatory you know it's an exclamation somehow it passed on smoothly leaving all obstacles safely behind trees came running towards them but then stopped as the bus reached them and simply stood there helpless for a moment by the side of the road before rushing away in other direction now this is all very nostalgic even when we were very young even if you remember when you were a a child when you were just a mere child if you saw outside the window when you were riding by a, your car or your train or anything okay <laughs> your train okay by a car or any vehicle you know whenever we look outside it seems that the trees are also running along with us okay children usually think this thing that the trees are running along and whenever the bus stops whenever the vehicle stops the trees also stop and when the bus starts again when the vehicle starts again they are actually running in the opposite direction it seems that as if they are running in the opposite direction so valli also actually felt that the trees were running in the opposite direction i remember i remember that in my childhood i asked this question from my mother then mama are the trees actually you know running or is the bus running okay i could not actually believe her answer my mother said that no the trees are stationary they are not moving from the place but i did not believe her i thought that the yes the trees are also running backwards and i am the one who is seeing it okay mama cannot see that the trees are running but i can i can see that the trees are running on the in the opposite direction then when my siblings grew up and when my cousins grew up and they used to travel with us they also asked the same question so every child has this kind of nature this kind of you know curious nature they also you know every child they they think of the same things so valli was also thinking that the trees are running in the opposite direction and the vehicle that is running in the front especially when you travel by a bus you know bus has a big windshield you can just see everything out when you particularly when you stand in the front when you see from the front when you see outside the windshield it seems as if the bus is going to you know collide with the other vehicle or it's going to just eat up the other person but she was seeing that magically everything was happening the bus was moving smoothly on all the obstacles anything that was coming on the way that was being cleared off and the bus was moving just smoothly enough now Suddenly Valli clapped her hands with glee a young cow tail high in the air was running very fast right in the middle of the road right in front of the bus the bus slowed to a crawl and the driver sounded his horn loudly again and again now what happened valli clapped her hands with glee valli saw a cow 
valli here saw a little cow and she saw a young cow she saw the baby cow and her tail was high in the air okay and the cow was running in front of the bus okay it was running in front of the bus and it was quite you know fascinating for valli it was quite a different you know it was quite an unusual experience for valli to see that that the cow was running in front of the bus maybe she was thinking that the cow has won okay it's it was basically you know seeming like a race that you know cow is running faster than the bus she was so much excited that yes the cow is running in front of the bus obviously the bus slowed down to a crawl bus did not you know wanted to hit the cow so it uh, you know slowed to a crawl and the bus it made a horn sound the bus basically you know pushed the horn so that the cow could move from it in the side again and again but the more he honked the more frightened the animal became and faster it now obviously the animal doesn't know that the meaning of horn is to you know get to the side so as the horn was blowing as he was blowing the horn the animal was quite getting confused at whether i should go there whether i should go it was quite confused at where what should i do what should i do the animal the you know the little cow she was very much confused so this thing was happening okay and valli was enjoying everything valli was enjoying this visual it's very different for her now uh, okay faster it galloped the animal was basically galloping it was jumping it was jumping it was very frightened it was very scared always right in front of the bus somehow this was very funny to valli she laughed and laughed until there were tears in her eyes hey lady haven't you laughed enough called the conductor better save some for tomorrow now this was all very funny for valli valli was just thinking that okay it's very funny uh, okay people might not think that it's funny but valli thought that it's quite funny that the you know cow is running in front of the bus and it's you know jumping it's just galloping and it's just you know not getting out of the way of the bus it's just actually halting the bus so this was all very funny she just used to clap her hands she was just laughing and laughing and laughing unless and until the conductor again just jumped into her matter again he poked his nose and he said that madam haven't you laughed enough save something for tomorrow okay do not laugh that much you have laughed already enough now at last the cow moved off the road and soon the bus came to a rail road crossing now at last the obstacle was removed the cow was not in front of the bus anymore and soon the bus came to a railroad crossing there was a railroad crossing it was you know you know no what's a railroad crossing it's basically when the rails cross okay there is there is a crossing and then the bus usually there is a halt when you have to stop for the rail to cross and then you just move your vehicle when the uh, you know barrier is removed it's kind of a boom barrier of a kind of a thing a speck of a train could be seen in the distance growing bigger and bigger as it drew nearer then it rushed past the crossing gate with a tremendous roar and rattle shaking the bus <coughs> so when the rail is crossing when the train is crossing again you know children children have an inquisitive mind as i told you that uh, maybe valli was thinking that okay the train is coming from a distance it was just looking a small train and when as it is you know coming closer at is drawing closer it's looking bigger so this was also something i remember that i did not ask this question but one of my cousins she asked from her mother that mama the train was looking very small has a train grown bigger as it's approaching you know in front of us as we can see that from distance the things appear to be smaller but as they you know come closer they appear to be bigger so this was a question that was going you know going going on in her mind and might might be in valli's mind too so she saw the train crossing the railroad and uh, while it was crossing it had you know the trains are quite heavy and they move with a lot of speed so it was also shaking the bus the bus was also shaking with when the train was crossing it was roaring it was rattling then the bus went on and passed the train station from there it traversed a busy well laid out shopping street and turning entered a wider thoroughfare such big bright, bright looking shops what glittering displays of clothes and other merchandise such big crowds now finally from the village the bus has reached the town it has a different kind of visuals it is completely different kind of visuals now we could see that it traversed it took a turn 
okay the bus took a turn in a busy lane now she could see busy lanes she could see shops she could see beautiful dresses and it was a shopping street basically it was a place where people usually do did shopping and everything it entered a wider thoroughfare uh, thoroughfare basically means a place where people actually cross so it was wider it was a wider road and she could see bright looking uh, shops glittering displays she could see glittering clothes and merchandise she could see different sort of things and such big crowds there were a lot of people who had come to do shopping so it was again a quite a different experience it was quite a different visual experience for valley struck dumb with wonder valley gaped at everything then the bus stopped and everything got off except valley now struck dumb she was struck dumb it means that she was just, she was like that she was gaping gaping means you know mouth wide open mouth wide open in awe she was struck dumb struck dumb means you know when suddenly she you're shocked Oh, everything was so beautiful everything was it was such a different experience for her so she she was just you know looking everything with a mouth open and everybody got down on the got down from the bus they had reached the town but not valli valli she did not get off the get off the bus hey lady said the conductor aren't you ready to get off this is as far as your 30 paise takes you now obviously the conductor poked in and the conductor told you that oh, you don't have to get down from the bus hey the conductor doesn't know her plan basically that she is you know planning to get on you know remain in the bus so she tells her that this is how far your 30 paise will take you you we have reached the town now you know you just get down of the bus now valli tells her that i am going to go back on the same bus she now tells him his plan her plan that i'm going to ride on the same bus she took another 30 paise she took another 30 paise from her pocket and she was she gave it to the conductor why is something the matter now he says okay is something a matter no conductor was concerned conductor was quite concerned and conductor was asking is everything okay why are you not getting out in the town so no nothing's a matter i just felt like having a bus ride that's all now she tells her tells him that okay i was just here for a ride i had just come for a simple ride i was not you know i'm not planning to get down on the town i did not come for the town i had just come for a bus ride now maybe it was quite a surprise from the conductor as well now See again, we could see that how smart Wally was. Wally did not give the money to the conductor as she got on the bus. She did not hand over sixty paise to him at once. She first gave him thirty paise, took the ticket. Then she waited for you know when she reached the town. Then she you know took out thirty paise again from her pocket to give in order to give to the conductor so that he could you know give her another ticket of going back to the village. So Wally was very smart. Okay, Wally was quite a smart girl. Don't you want to have a look at the sights now that you are here, all by myself? Oh, I would be much too afraid. Now conductor may be wondering. Conductor was wondering that okay, okay. Now you have come to the town. You have come so far. You have paid thirty paise. Why don't you just get down and why don't you just have a look around the town? Just stay here, you know. Just stay here. Just look at the arounds. Now she said, all by myself, <laughs> all by myself. She was thinking that all alone, all alone. Now she came from uh, her village to the town all alone. But now she was getting feared. She was fearing from getting down to the bus and she was fearing to explore the town. greatly amused by the girl's way of speaking the conductor said but you weren't afraid to come in the bus now he was greatly amused he was quite fascinated he was you know it was very you know a happy moment for the conductor because the way she said the way she expressed it was looking like that as if she's fearing and you know she has always showed that she was quite courageous so she was he didn't that oh you are getting feared huh little girl you were not afraid to come you know you were not afraid to come in the bus okay you were you're just a pretty girl and you have given 30 paise and you were riding in the bus alone why why are you not getting down why you should look at the town as well nothing to be afraid of about that she answered well then why not go to that stall over here and have something to drink nothing to be afraid of about that either oh no i couldn't do that well then let me bring you a cold drink now again their conversation is now again she's trying to show that she is quite 
independent she is strong she is strong and she is confident she says no i am not fearing i'm i'm not fearful at all i'm not frightened getting down the bus i can go in the town i can do is this and that now he you know he gives her a suggestion that why don't you go to that st- stall why don't you have a cold drink or something you have something for to drink na okay might be it's a summer day so he was you know thinking that she should have a cold drink or something so she denies she denies that okay i do not want to get a cold drink or something now he offers him that okay i'll bring a cold drink for you okay i'll bring a cold drink for you now she tells him now he gives her gives him the reason she tells her oh, no i do not have the money obviously the reality was maybe she was thinking of getting off the bus maybe if she had money she would have got down the bus she would have enjoyed a cold drink or something but she told him no i do not have that much money okay i just you know saved because obviously we know the reality na that she had saved those 60 paise with a great effort it took a lot of time for her to gather that much money so she told him that i do not have that much money now conductor offered him that this would be my treat this would be my treat i would you know give the cold drink to you no no she said firmly please no again she denied no no i i, I do not need that as i told you she is self made she is confident she denied again no she doesn't want favors you know she is a 21st century girl it's looking like you know she is all bold and confident she doesn't want any favors from anyone the conductor shrugged and they waited until it was time for the bus to begin the journey and again there weren't many passengers again now he was offering her to get her you know the cold drink again and again but when she said no firmly now you have to focus on this thing she said no firmly she was quite confident okay the other children if you look at other children maybe you know children are very innocent innocent they usually give up you know when somebody offers them something they usually give up but we could see that wali is quite confident she is strong she is smart she said no sorry i do not need it and the conductor shrugged the conductor said, okay okay so they waited they waited when it was time to go back again and again there were very few passengers in the bus now the fourth part won't your mother be looking for you the conductor asked when he gave the gave the girl her ticket no one will be looking for me she said now the conductor conductor is basically now wondering that okay if she has just come for a ride maybe her parents didn't allow her to do that because earlier he might be thinking that okay her parents had sent her and she had to go to the town she maybe had to meet a relative or something so maybe she had come to the town maybe she was going there but now when he realized that she had just come for a ride he started asking her the questions that is your mother not waiting for you now she said no no one's waiting for me okay because she knew that my, my malba would be sleeping okay nobody is looking after me uh, no nobody be, would be looking for me the bus started and again there were the same wonderful signs wali was in board in the slightest and greeted everything with the same excitement she had felt the first time but suddenly she saw a young cow lying dead by the road side just where it had been struck by some fast moving vehicle now now comes the time of self realization now we'll meet with the reality of life it was the time for wali to face a dark truth the bus started the bus started and again what happened earlier we could see uh, now we can see that wali was enjoying everything because obviously she was just going back to her village so the same scenes were coming same visuals that she had experienced earlier the same visuals she could see again and she was not bored slightest okay because she was very uh, you know excited she was very curious she was you know she wanted to see each and everything again she was just you know not at all bored so she was looking at everything with the same excitement she was sharing the same excitement as excited as she was the first time when she looked at all those things but now she looked at a dead cow yes it was the same cow that was galloping in front of the bus so when she saw the bow, you know when she saw the cow what happened we are going to learn isn't that the same cow that ran in front of the bus on a trip to the town she has a conductor now she has a conductor she was obviously she was again she was very startled she was shocked she was frightened to see the bus she uh, sorry uh, the dead cow so she has a conductor isn't that the same cow isn't that the same cow when we, we saw her you know now the conductor nodded and she was overcome with sadness what had been a lovable beautiful creature just a little while ago had now suddenly lost its charm and its life and looked so horrible so frightened as it lay there legs spread eagled a fixed stare in 
his, its lifeless eyes blood all over. When the conductor nodded, she again saw the cow. She was thinking that what a wonderful creature it was. As we could see that the cow was jumping, it was galloping, it was you know running in front of the bus. It was so full of life. But now it has died. Okay, the bus, the cow had died. The cow had died and how she was looking? She was looking horrible. She had lost all its charm. You know, children usually love to see the cows and everything. They are very beautiful. If you look at a cow, she, it's so cute. It's such a lovely creature. It's so beautiful. But now when she saw the cow, it was just looking horrible. There was blood spilled all over. Her legs were spread eagle. You know, when, okay. If you see a dead cow, it's just like that only. Her legs are, you know, her legs were spread. She had a fixed stare. Her eyes were open. Its eyes were open and she was looking, you know, lifelessly at something. Okay, it was a long stare at something. You know, sometimes uh, the dead persons, the dead person or the, the dead animal's eyes, they remo remain open. So the cow's eyes were open or uh, they remained open. So that is why. She could see that how horrible it was looking. It was so full of life. Now it had no life and there was blood everywhere. Everywhere. The bus moved on. The memory of the dead cow haunted her, dampening her enthusiasm. She no longer wanted to look out the window. The bus moved on. Now, as she had faced the reality of life, what's the reality of life? What is the most real thing? You know, what is the, you know, the real, the really real thing, you know, the real thing about life is that every person dies one day. Every person, any person who comes to this world, they die one day. This is the reality. This is a sad reality. This is a real reality of this world. And when she saw the dead cow, it haunted her. She was quite scared. Okay, she was all alone. She could not share it with anyone. So that is why she, now she did not want to. It Her enthusiasm was dampening. It means that it was getting lighter and she was not now enthusiastic at all. She was just, you know, feeling very sad. And she did not want to look out of the window anymore because she saw, she realized that no matter how beautiful a thing is, no matter how beautiful life is, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to get over at a point, okay? There is a point that is going to come in our life that when everything will stop, okay, when everything will, you know, we are going to meet with the reality. We are going to meet the creator one day. She sat thus glued to her seat until the bus reached her village at 3.40. She stood up and stretched herself. Then she turned to the conductor and said, well, sir, I hope to see you again. Now she sat thus glued to her seat again, but she is poised. Now we can see that obviously she was very sad, but she did not cry and all. She did not make a scene out of it. She did not shout. She did not scream when she saw the dead cow. She was just glued to her seat. When her stop came, she just get uh, you know got up from her seat. She even told the conductor that, that hope to see you uh, again, sir. Okay. She you know you know uh, she showed respect to the conductor finally, and she told him that okay, I hope to see you again. Okay, madam. The conductor also says, okay, madam, he answer heard, smiling, whenever you feel like a bus ride, come and join us and don't forget to bring your fare. Now, see the line. The conductor told her that, okay, madam, whenever you feel like, you can come on, a, come on our bus, but don't, you know, forget to bring your 30 paise. Now, the conductor wants Wally to maintain her, you know, self-confidence. He wants to maintain that thing. That is why he is not telling her that I will do, do a favor on you because he saw earlier that she doesn't like favors. So he never told her that you can just get on the bus anytime. We would not charge you. We would not get a, you know, we would not take a ticket from you. You are just, you know, welcome to the bus anytime. He tells her that I will take, you know, 30 paise from you because you're a self-made girl. I was offering you a cold ring. You do not take, you do not take favors at all. That is why you just bring your 30 paise. She laughed and jumped down from the bus. Then away she went, running straight for home. When she entered her house, she found her mother awake and talking to one of Bali's aunts. The one from South Street, this aunt was a real chatterbox, never closing her mouth once she started talking. Now, as she got to her home, she saw that her mother had woken up. Her mother was no longer speak, uh, you know, sleeping. And she was talking to, she they, She was basically having a conversation with one of Bali's aunts. One of Bali's aunts, she used, they, she used to live in the South Street. And her. they're also telling about her aunt that she was a chatterbox. She always used to chat, chat, chat. She used to talk a lot. And whenever she opened her mouth, she used to talk a lot. And the other person just used to listen. 
so she was a chatterbox her chatterbox auntie had come and where have you been said her aunt when valli came in she spoke very casually not expecting a reply so valli just smiled and her mother and aunt went on with their conversation now usually what happens is that whenever we we ask her oh ho where were you ha huh? where had you gone she was not expecting a answer like casually she was just asking her okay where have you come from and something like that so valli also knew that that she's not expecting a answer so valli just simply smiled and she just went on her way yes you're right her mother said so many things are mixed and the world outside how can we possibly know about everything and even when we do know about something we often can't understand it completely can we now this is something this is a line this is basically a dialogue that her mother was saying and this particular dialogue was actually you know matching with the situation of valli what valli had basically experienced her mother was you know talking randomly about a stuff she valli did not know about you know valli and her mother valli and her valli's mother and valli's aunt were having a conversation which valli had no idea about they were just talking about a random thing and she said you are right there are many things that are happening in the middle of the world and we are not aware of it you know we are just sitting at our home and we are not aware of the things that are going outside okay we do not know anything that's going on how can we possibly know how can we possibly know possibly know about each and everything that is going on outside in the world unless and until we do not go outside and look them from our own eyes now uh we often can't understand it completely okay we cannot understand it completely we do not actually understand that what's going on so what's going on valli is also thinking the same things in her mind valli was always wondering about outside how the outside world looks i am always in my house i am never going outside okay i never uh, you know rode a bus i never saw the outside world i have to look at all the visual imageries so she was living in a fantasy world she actually enjoyed the fantasy world but then she met with the reality of life she saw a dead cow the cow that was very happy now she was dead she met with the reality now this was a something this was something that she was also thinking in her mind whatever her mother was speaking oh yes breathe valli now valli as she could understand what her mother was trying to say she also said oh yes oh yes what as a mother what's that you say oh said valli i was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge now as valli as valli was actually able to correlate correlate with whatever her mother was saying so she said yes oh yes now her mother was obviously she was wondering that why is she saying oh yes she didn't does not know what i'm talking about she asked her that why why are you saying oh yes so she said that i agree with everything that you're saying i'm agreeing with you that we do not know that you said about things happening without our knowledge things happen without our knowledge valli did not saw the a uh, cow basically dying she did not saw the cow dying she just saw her enjoying her life she just saw the cow dancing in front of the street in front of the bus and everything she did not know about the cow so in a way she was not aware of it she was not aware of her death when that when she died how she died so when she saw the cow uh, dead cow she was wondering that how it happened okay how it happened how she died okay and she did not know about that thing she was actually trying to process it was very difficult for a no 8 year old girl to process that information that how that cow died now just a chit of a girl she is said her aunt and yet look how she pokes her nose into our conversation just as though we she were a grown lady valli smiled to herself she didn't want them to understand her smile but then there wasn't much chance of that was there just a chit of a girl just a chit of a girl like the elder people usually usually say just a chit of a girl just a pretty girl she is she's just a small girl and look at her she is poking in our conversation she is just jumping into her uh, into our conversation out of nowhere you know, like the elders usually say that the children should not speak when the two elders when two elders are having a conversation so children should not speak in between but as we could see that valli interrupted them so her aunt was you know she was uh, irritated that why is she jumping into the conversation as if she is a grown lady she also tells her as if she is a grown lady now valli smiled at herself you know valli smiled because valli actually knew 
that today she has become she had become an old lady a, a grown up lady she had become a grown up lady because now she had an experience she had experience she had a beautiful experience she was called madam on the bus because she was so confident she was so strong she was such she had made such a bold step it was a very bold step for an 8 year old girl to ride on the bus alone she had taken that step and that too she had faced the reality of life today she had saw such beautiful locations she had done so many things she was basically grown up she tried to hide her smile but she could not do that because she was smiling in front of that and you know elders are very smart they you know usually they get to know that what's going on inside their children's mind so that is that was a thing with walli now let's get on the important key points okay an 8 year old girl walliya mai is curious to know about things so we meet an 8 year old girl walliya mai who is curious to know about things she was very inquisitive she was you know always she wanted to know about the things she wanted to learn she observes day to day activities very carefully she sees a bus passing by her village every day walliya mai walli decides to take a bus ride as she saw that the bus was going up and down every day she was very much excited the excitement was growing and she wondered that how you know good it would be that if i rode the bus she saves money for the bus ride one afternoon she boards the bus the bus is new and seats are soft and luxurious so as we were you know giving the visual description description of the bus so they are saying that the bus was very beautiful walli is very happy it's a new experience for her she sees canals green fields mountains grasslands are across outside the window walli takes tickets and wants to be addressed wants not to be addressed as madam by the bus conductor as we know that the conductor was calling her madam madam she did not want that thing to happen she stops him do not call me madam anymore an old woman enters and sits beside walli walli does not like the old woman as she is chewing betel and has an ugly earrings walli observe everything she sees a cow the cow was galloping in front of the bus now they are telling about that old lady that walli met with and that lady was quite repulsive she was not you know quite appealing she was not quite attractive so they are telling that she was not happy basically to meet that lady she sees a cow in front of a bus and walli is very happy and claps with joy the bus finally reaches the town the passengers get down but walli remains seated okay now walli you know the bus reaches the town everybody gets down but walli doesn't because walli had to you know ride down the bus you know again the bus conductor asks her to the reason asks her the reason she says that she wanted to just ride on the bus she just simply wanted to ride on the bus on her return journey she sees the same cow lying dead on the road ride walli becomes very sad as we knew that when she saw the cow she was finally she was very sad finally she reaches her village she gets down and tells the conductor so, to see again okay now when she reaches her destination she was very sad as we know that she was quite sad by what happened what when she saw the dead cow it was just lying there and she was not uh, she was very sad but when she bid goodbye to the conductor she said that i hope to see you again you know walli reaches home and finds her mother talking to an aunt her mother asks her where she had gone walli does not reply and behaves like a grown up lady now as her aunt and her mother were uh, you know having a conversation they realized that they, they realized that uh, you know uh, they were asking that where walli had gone walli did not answer but she simply smiled and she behaved like a grown up lady now the time for homework now see homework is basically from your sample paper i have you know picked up this question from the sample paper we are just going to discuss it and then you will have to attempt this question see the question is walli's unique maiden bus ride experience could be possible because she belonged to a village do you agree why why not so basically they are saying that walli's unique maiden experience maiden bus experience means it was her first experience maiden basically means first it was a first experience for her okay it was the first time that she was experiencing a bus ride they are saying that it was only possible because she used to live in a village not in a town was it possible if she was living in a town they are asking you the reason now you have to tell this okay just wonder you know you just have to think in your mind that whether it was possible if she was living in a town not in a village now you can think of it why why not if you think so for example this is you know you should agree with this because this is correct 
if she was in a town it was not possible for her to do you have to give the reasons now the first reason can be the safety reasons the safety reasons can be there if she was living in a town she was not living in a village because in village in villages usually there is a lot of safety there is a lot of security because usually the people know each other and the people have you know a kind of shame in them and uh, it's kind of a you know good community you can say but in towns you know various different types of people live so it's not basically very much safe to do so in a village so that would be one of the reasons what could be the second reason the second reason could be that if she was living in a town it was not possible to do she might not be you know wondering about the things that were going on because she may not have experienced she may not experience the beautiful sights when you usually go to a town you can see that there is a jungle there is a concrete jungle there are buildings and buildings everywhere there everywhere there is a there is pollution there is you know a lot of traffic and everything and it was not possible it would not have been possible for walli to come to home on time because she was not she may not be sure about the time that she was reaching so she would not have you know she could not have made a beautiful a uh, you know not beautiful a perfect plan if she was living in village uh, she was living in a town because first for the safety reasons and the other was that not because of the beautiful sights she might not have been interested in the ugly sights of the uh, town and the other thing was she was also not even you know sure that she would reach her home on time because of the traffic and everything so this is if you agree with this if you do not agree with this you can write that yes it's possible it would have been possible for wali i do not agree with this you can say that i could not i do not agree with this that um, she was able to do it that she belonged to a village if she had belonged to a town she would have been able to do that a girl living in a town can also experience a bus uh, ride because uh, maybe she is a very smart uh, you can also write about the smartness you can write the reason that she may have been even more smart she would have been smarter if she was a town girl and um, she could you know easily get out of her house it would have been easier for her to you know uh, you know save money and she would have enjoyed the things particularly well so this can be the thing now you see that the question was not direct okay the question was indirect it was a value based question it is you know a situation based question so you have given a situation and you have to answer accordingly so this depends on you you just write down the answer in the comments below and just let us know and uh, i hope that you understood that chapter you just fell in love with walli the character of walli such a bold and beautiful girl thank you so much for this class we'll meet in the next class till then bye bye take your children